There was a rocket test back in China in May of this year where a company called Space Epoch tested a small but a essentially reusable rocket hopper. This wasn't just any rocket, this was a rocket that was using methane and liquid oxygen as its fuels. It was only powered by one engine, but the main structure of the rocket was made out of stainless steel. The full-size version would essentially be around the size of a Falcon 9. What was most impressive about their test was when they were able to do the hover and landing splashdown in the ocean nearby where they launched from and recover that rocket and bring it back to their factory and essentially just clean it off. Well, it turns out that this company, Space Epoch, actually purchased their engines from another company. They're called Juzhou Yunjian, or JZYJ for short. The company that made this engine, this Methalox engine, that will not only be used for Space Epoch's rockets, but a few other companies' rockets as well, this company is trying to be like the Aerojet of China. Good for them. This company claims that they just tested that engine again. The one that was recovered from sea from that suborbital hop test. It only reached 2.5 kilometers, so it wasn't even that high. Although impressive that they were able to have the nice hover and splash down in the ocean. Still an impressive test and an impressive feat in and of itself. This stuff is hard. Apparently, though, the Aerojet of China claims that they were able to just clean off this engine and do static test firings of it again. Basically meaning that the claim of not being able to recover your engines from salt water is bunk? Well, not necessarily. We don't know what materials they're making this engine out of. And it's possible that the housing that it had on this suborbital hop test vehicle was watertight. So it wasn't getting in aside from the exposed part of the engine bell. That's a possibility. Maybe not. Maybe so. But maybe not. I don't know. This company could also be lying. Apparently, this company has been around since 2017, eight years ago. In any case, the engine is about 173,000 uh, pounds of force, or 770 kilonewtons. And as a comparison, for the Merlin um, 1D, that's the specs I'm looking at here, according to Wikipedia, that's 981 kilonewtons, or 221,000 pounds of force. So it may not be as powerful as the engines that power the Falcon 9, but it is using methane as its fuel, and it's using a stainless steel vehicle, at least in the case of this company, Space Epoch. And if it's true, I'm not 100% sure if I believe it, but if it's true that they were able to just clean this thing off and do another static fire and reuse it, that's amazing. I probably am assuming that there was a little bit of refurbishment going on, at least a couple of things that might have needed to be replaced on it, but maybe not. Here we are nearing the end of July, and this test was conducted on May 25th for the flight. So about two months later, they were able to take this thing apart and get it in some sort of configuration to do these static fire tests again. This is kind of impressive. And I don't know, it seems to me like we should be worried about this. Methane is a really smart choice. There's already another rocket out there from China, the Zhuqiu rocket, that was the first methane-fueled rocket ever to actually launch and achieve orbit. SpaceX is doing their part with the Raptor engine on Starship, Vulcan Centaur, and the BE-4 engine, and by extension, New Glenn is also using methane fuel. Even Relativity Space is using methane for their Aeon engine on their rocket, Terran R, and Stoke Space is also using methane for their Nova rocket. So, <laughs> noticing a trend here? In any case, I thought that this was super interesting, and we have a whole bunch of flights to look forward to this week. Obviously, the big one is the Crew 11 flight, which is no earlier than this Thursday, launching the next crew to the International Space Station. On top of that, Australian company Gilmore Space may or may not be launching their rocket for the first time this week. We'll see. <laughs> There's not going to be a live stream, and they are keeping pretty quiet about their announcements. And, you know, I, I understand it with their first launch. They don't want to embarrass themselves. But at the same time, it's a shame that uh, we're only going to hear about it after the fact, whenever it takes place. 
batch of Starlinks are launching tonight. A Starlink competitor from China is launching tomorrow. And also the NISAR spacecraft is finally launching on a GSLV rocket. This is a partnership between NASA and ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. So that's going to be happening tomorrow, and hopefully everything goes well with it. And aside from two more Starlink launches this week, there's also going to be a Kaizhou launch from China, a New Shepard launch from Blue Origin launching another suborbital tourism crew, and another one of the suborbital missions from Rocket Lab doing hypersonic suborbital testing for different companies. This mission's called Jake 4, but aside from that, we aren't going to know much about it, and they don't stream those ones either, so... but. They're having another one, so good for Rocket Lab for having another business case and another use for Electron. I really want to know what you think, though, about this Chinese company and whether or not they actually pulled it off and were able to reuse engines after a seawater-based recovery. What do you guys think? Is this company just full of it and what they're saying they've accomplished isn't possible? Or is there something that we're overlooking as to what makes this possible? And is it just simply having some sort of watertight housing to reduce your amount of exposure to seawater? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to give us a like if you enjoyed this quick update and subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to hit the bell so that you're notified whenever we upload a new video. Also, big shout out and thank you to all of our members who have been contributing and supporting the show so that we can bring you space news content. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards and don't forget, add Astra to the stars.